Thank you, everyone, and welcome to this session. Uh, I am super excited to be moderating, especially because I've got uh, I've got uh, great panelists, and we're going to have a great conversation around something that um, not only am I particularly interested in, but happens to be. Uh, my field, uh, my, my line of business, my line of functioning, as it were, um, you know, creative economy and how, you know, some of the things we're going to be exploring that I'm quite excited about. Oh, oh, okay. Can everyone hear me good now? Oh, I'm, I'm yeah, sorry about that. Uh, I'm just going to get my notes uh, going and uh, and we can... So, my name is Kobam Zasukwo uh, from Nigeria. I'm, uh, uh, how, how do I describe myself? Is it, is it safe for me to say I'm light-skinned? Uh, <laughs> you know, it's a very interesting, uh, that, that's an interesting subject for another day, so I won't, I won't get into it. But, um, I'm wearing a pair of jeans. I'm wearing easy loafers. I, uh, I'm bearing my hair low cut and I'm wearing a pair of sunshades and I'm holding the microphone sitting with uh, uh, braille notes as well as my phone and a prompt earphone in my ears. Um, I'm super excited about this session. Like I said, it is... Um, it's one that's close to my heart because it's one that um, I, I feel like I've uh, I pretty much failed forward and um, suffered my way through to success. And I think that experience will be true for a lot of us um, who are on the panel. Uh, and so just before we progress, um, I, I just, I just want to mention that uh, what 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 we're hoping to do with this session uh, is to hopefully discover innovative approaches and success stories, you know, in f fostering entrepreneurship and uh, e economic empowerment within the disability community. Um, we hope, you know, and we, we don't just hope, we, we want you to come with us as um, we envision a more inclusive future where diverse talents actually thrive in the global marketplace. Um, and so I'm very happy to introduce uh, my friends with me. Um, we're going to be having this uh, conversation together. And... Um, uh, one person I'm happy to introduce is uh, a dear friend of mine who I just recently met, um, Kamanu. Kamanu's a musician. I think he deserves a round of applause. <laughs> is Nadia here? Is Nadia here? Okay, not, not yet. Okay. Of course, we have Dennis Karanja, another fantastic musician. And um, we're, we're going to be going into this together. Uh, fantastic. Good afternoon. How are you today? Yeah, so my name is Denise Karanja, also known as um, Deno Music. I'm a recording and a performing artist. Um, <clears throat> rose to fame through the song Bona that I featured um, one Kenyan icon by the name Daddy Owen. Apart from that, I'm also a brand ambassador, a radio TV host, and um, I run an organization called Amani Gold, which was established um, to bring sustainable sh solutions um, uh, through to the challenges that hamper the children, um, youth, women, and persons with disability in Kenya communities. I thank you. Fantastic, thank you. Um, Kamano, let's, let's get to um, meet you directly before we jump into this. So just uh, share a little bit about yourself and, um, you know. Good afternoon. My name is Kamano Tomwari. I am a musician, uh, 
I mostly play African music uh, fused into contemporary music. Mostly I sing in my mother tongue, Kimeru. Uh, today I'm wearing a, a navy blue, uh, actually it's Nigerian outfit. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm a person with albinism. I'm wearing glasses. Uh, I have dreadlocks. And yes, I'm wearing easy loafers as well. I understand they're called easy loafers. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much, Kamano. Thank you. Um, we have Ezekiel Mutua. Sorry? Yes, so um, also we have Ezekiel Mutua uh, from the Music Copyright Society of Kenya. Is that correct? Absolutely. Okay, fantastic. We want to get to meet you as well. So just um, a brief introduction before we dive in. Uh, thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Dr. Ezekiel Mutua. I'm the CEO of the Music Copyright Society of Kenya. We administer copyright on behalf of... Uh, uh, authors, composers, arrangers, and um, uh, authors of music. We are a CMO registered in Kenya, but we have collaboration and reciprocal agreements with almost 100 countries across the world. So these uh, great people are here. Uh, my members, including Deno here, very proud members, and Kamano, good to see all of you. As a Sana, I look forward to interacting with you. Fantastic, thank you. All right, so let's let's dive in. Uh, so, so my first question, uh, the first the first um, bit of the discourse for me is um, so initially I'd hoped I'd direct you know I would direct uh, one question to one panelist, but I feel like this is a question that you know everyone should chime in, uh, and I'm I'm going to start with you, Kamano, if that's all right. Um, so, in in your opinion, how can creative industries adapt? their business models to better accommodate and empower persons with disabilities as creators, entrepreneurs, and consumers. What are, what are, what are your thoughts? Uh, <clears throat> thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Akabams. Uh, we find, uh, cause, uh, listening to the discussions also during uh, various presentations, we, we have heard that uh, the adoptive technology for, for persons with disability mostly is, uh, is measured on learning uh, or, or rather adopting the mainstream, uh, mainstream technologies uh, for persons with disabilities. Mm. By mainstream, I mean uh, it's mostly educative material, which is uh, if, it, if there were to learn about the computers, it's about the Microsoft Word, Adobe, mm. uh, spreadsheet. Uh, you find creatives are disruptors. They, they, they are those people that, when everybody is going to the right, they are going they to, to the, the wrong. Left. I mean, to the left. <laughs> so you find these are people that, uh, they, they are uh, pathfinders in their own rights. So I believe uh, the, we don't yet have our space in the, in the, in the adoptive technology because uh, you find that we, we have to learn uh, how to use the existing technology to best serve uh, our, our burning desires. So uh, I don't know if I'm getting to... to scratching the surface of, of your answer. Or oh, yeah, sure, sure. Um, but, you know, just as a follow-up question, yeah. and, you know, I was going to um, take this on to Dennis. Um, what, what do you think, you know, the role of, like, accessible workspaces, for instance, how do you think, you know, that helps empower, you know, persons with disability, you know, especially in this building and contributing to, you know, creative economy. I mean, what, what are some, so in my mind, I'm thinking some of the things we struggle with, you know, would be, you know, accessible workspaces and things like that. But I mean, are there, are, what, what are your thoughts generally on the, on the, the, on the idea? Okay. Um, I would say <coughs> that, uh, um, that persons with disabilities who are in the creatives, um, number one, uh, 
if there is no accessibility, um, uh, there is no that accessibility, number one, we shall lack information because uh, um, as, an, as, a, as an artist, you write what um, is uh, you write what uh, you are inspired with by what you what you hear and uh, what is around you. So back in the days, eh, we used to um, like if you want to write a song about environment, you will um, sit down with a friend who can maybe uh, who can be able to see, and he will talk to you about what he sees and what he visualizes about the, the whole thing about the environment, the trees, um, uh, the sea, the rivers, and you will use his brain to write your song. But uh, with, um, uh, with um, when you are able to access information, I think you are able to research and uh, write a song about um, write a song on what you as a person are thinking. So I believe that uh, with access of information, mm. you are ready, you are able to research for yourself and be able to write mm. uh, in regards to what uh, you, you're thinking. Mm. I don't know if I have answered uh, the question. Yeah, um, so I, I was going to ask uh, uh, Mr. Ezekiel, um, do, you, do you think there's enough collaborations with um, like people who advocate for disability rights or organizations who advocate for disability rights in terms of, um, you know, like building campaigns, you know, you know, conversations around, you know, workspaces, you know, that accommodate, you know, just those sorts of things. Uh, do, you, do you feel like enough of that is happening in our space? Because, you know, I feel like, you know, those are some of the ways that um, we can accommodate and empower persons with disability in the creative industry, you know, you know, where we have accessible workspaces, where we have tools and technologies, you know, where we have networking opportunities, you know, and the likes, where we have, you know, inclusive marketing campaigns that cater, to, you know, to PWDs, even as consumers, you know, Working arrangements, all, all of these different things. Do you feel like there's enough collaboration, you know, especially in the African space, um, with you know, the, the organizations such as Enable, for instance, to create a better environment for PWDs within you know the creative economic sector? Uh, absolutely not. Um, uh, if you look at this all conversation, it's about building an ecosystem. Mm. Uh, is my mic working? You can hear me. This whole conversation is about an ecosystem, building an ecosystem and ensuring that that ecosystem works seamlessly because it's not possible for us to arrive at um, sustainable development and support the creatives to really achieve their dreams if the ecosystem is not working. And there are so many players that... Uh, uh, must work together to ensure that um, this conversation then becomes useful. So if you're asking if there is uh, enough collaboration, I would say no. A lot more needs to be done from uh, at all levels, from the policy makers to implementers to caregivers to the attitudes in society, like Deno here is saying, to providing information uh, ensuring that um, we have affirmative action that really speaks to the needs uh, of people with disabilities within the creative space, mm -hmm. access and inclusivity in terms of uh, technology. Uh, I, think, I think we've got to think about this and tech companies have to be ahead of this game and the media as well mm. to ensure that um, uh, as they innovate we are thinking about this very critical segment of society that only needs to be pushed, only needs to be given the, uh, the access, and they are able to do so much. So for me, is, um, uh, this conference is a, is a timely conference to ensure that we rally 
the different stakeholders to be able to do what we must do okay. to provide the inclusivity that All right. is needed. Let me, yeah, th thank you very much. Very succinctly put. Um, so um, just to mention that we have another panelist who's joined us. I was looking forward to you joining us, Nadia. We have Nadia Wamunyu. Nadia, thank you so much for joining us. Maybe I should just move to you very quickly. And I, I, um, I want to talk about something. Um, I started this by saying that um, I failed forward and suffered my way to success. Um, you know, but we want to look at some successful examples. Uh, or I want us to talk about some successful examples of businesses or initiatives that have been led by you know persons with disability. Um, you know, within the creative economy, and what lessons can be learned from their experiences. Nadia. Hi. I'm my name is Nadia Ramuno. I'm a artist. I pass as Kona Kona collective. I breathe as if when I born, but I don't born with death. So when I was three years old, but I don't remember what happened to me. But I just woke up in the hospital. I just I lost my hair. Not give birth. I, I lost for me when I was up it on. So, um, yeah, so I do my art, but I do my own company called W N W Art Gallery. So, but I do my work with about most of women who don't come possible in that body. But it's like the I pay women like the empower women right like something like that yeah so yeah this is me <laughs> fantastic yeah, thank you, Nadia. Also, just to mention, um, so uh, I I don't know how many of us here have used, you know, be be my eyes. I'm, I'm sure a number of us, you know, have. Uh, and I think I've also heard of. Are they called the? Is it the Deaf West Theatre? I think that's what they're called. Um, I think they're based in in Hollywood. Also, and I know that um, they've been doing quite a number of major plays. Uh, they've done the Adventures of Pinocchio and a couple other, um, you know, major Broadway offerings. Um, and you know, and these. But the, the, I guess the thing again with um, such. Um, innovations is, you know, they're out in the West where there's, you know, opportunities. And I, my hope and prayer is that we're able to sort of, you know, build models off of examples like Be My Eyes and um, and Deaf West. And I understand there's even, is it called Wheel, Wheelchair Jimmy now? I think it's called uh, a designer who makes... Um, um, adaptive designs or clothing, you know, for wheelchair users and things like that. And I, I think that's really exciting that the world is getting there. And the conversation is always, you know, obviously bringing this home and, you know, us being able to experience this and grow this ourselves. But we don't have a lot of time. But I, I, I'd just like to come back to you again, um, Kamano. How can, how do you think the creative economy can leverage technology and digital platforms to enhance accessibility and inclusion for persons with disabilities. You know, in, in terms of, we, we, yesterday when we had the conversation with Antonia, I think we talked about, you know, access to resources, you know, um, for some of us, you know, who use digital audio workstations or who use them, who produce music, that sort of thing. You know, so what, what are your thoughts on that? You know, how, how do you think you know, we can l leverage these platforms to enhance, you know, uh, accessibility and inclusion for persons with disabilities. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, allow me some few more minutes on that one. Uh, I'd like to, to, you know, uh, bring it to our attention that, uh, you see, even before an artist, whether they are able to differently or not, comes to a limelight, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of sacrifices from that particular artist. And they have to jump through lots of hurdles. Truth, uh, Daktari. 
before someone is able to be recognized even by, by the streaming platforms. You really have to have your numbers. And that takes a long time. That's a normal day uh, of an artist. So if you throw in an artist who has got special needs, uh, the road becomes uh, tenfold uh, challenging. Tougher, yes. And as you're saying, you stumbled forward on your way to success. Mm -hmm. You find that you, you, you had to like uh, get to that point in life whereby whatever happens, this is what has to work. It either works or has to work. And there's no plan B, it's all plan A. Mm. And you see, when you get to that point, uh, as a human being, uh, that's the point at which you become unstoppable. Mm. And whatever you set out to achieve has no option other than to give in. To give way, yes. Uh, sorry. So you find uh, for an artist who is uh, who has a disability, uh, all the odds are against them. Take for example uh, an artist who wants to learn guitar. A normal artist will go to YouTube and and get the and, the, uh, and get the videos and quickly they'll be on their way. Mm. Uh, an artist with visual impairments. Uh, will not be able to use the same material to learn the guitar. Yes, there's a lot of visual description and illustration that you can't follow. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's very true. And I, I, I kind of want to bring that to you, Dennis. Um, and just to mention, you told me about Michelle, and, you know, and, what, and I remember yes, Edwin, yes. You know, and just the, what the, the hoops these guys had to go through to learn you know, to do what they do. But I want to bring it to you, Dennis, and talk to me a little bit about, you know, and I don't know if this is something you have encountered, just working as a musician, and, and, and these days, you know, you're an instrumentalist of sorts, you're a producer of sorts, you become a little bit of you know, everything. Talk to me a little bit about the struggle in terms of accessibility with you know, um, production softwares like Pro Tools or Logic or um, um, you know, just any one of those things, Adobe Audition, whatever it is you use. You know. Talk to me about the, just the struggles of having to find your way and not having third party support. You know. talk, to, talk to me a little bit about that. I think what I can say is that uh, those softwares um, are not really accessible, meaning that with my screen reader or with my computer, I'm not able to go through uh, uh, FL or even um, Logic Pro. I'm not able to access it properly because I think it is in the JavaScript or something of that sort. So it's not, um, the screen reader is not able to, to read for me and uh, therefore I need to, I have to use someone with sight so that he can be able to, to do what I want to be done and most likely you will find that uh, um, that person may not really get the, the, the exact idea that you want to, to put out so one of the struggles is that uh, when I cannot be able to access it with my um, through my soft, my screen reader, mm. I am not able to put out my idea properly mm. because I'm depending on another person's input. Okay. So, yeah. So, sorry to cut you. So in 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 a way, you know, part of what we need because you know it's it's one thing to talk about the the you know the challenges and the problems, but you know, so part of what we're looking for is you know how we can have you know, adaptive designs mm. in order for you to be able to implement, yes. in order for you to be able to make money, in order, you know, because it yeah. comes to, you know, anybody else easily. You're sitting in front of, I mean, you mentioned Fruity Loops. Fruity Loops is an especially challenging software for people who create music, um, persons with disabilities who create mm. music. Mm. So it's basically creating, you know, adaptive designs, yeah. you know, or third party. Uh, uh, so for instance, I know Pro Tools, which is a software for creating music, Mm -hmm. has a third party software called Flow Tools which makes use of more um, keyboard shortcuts, shortcuts instead of uh, you know mouse you know shortcuts that sort of thing so yeah I think that that can be you know incredibly incredibly helpful Mr. Uh, Cobombs yeah. yeah allow me to add on to that one okay uh, you see um, from the point at which we are also tackling this one mm. is for that artist that has been able to jump through all the hoops and loops mm. Uh, and has made it up to a point where he's able to 
to go to studios and 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 uh, convince people that he can do this. Uh, what of spaces uh, where, Doctor, I'm looking at you on this one. What of spaces whereby we have special studios that can, before we, we even get uh, adoptive technology for musicians, uh, uh, we could consider low uh, low hanging fruits and the mm. quick gains, whereby we have studios that are friendly. Uh, to people with challenges because Absolutely. they require lots of patience. I'm mm -hmm. saying this because I've sat with uh, one of my musicians. He's very talented. Mm. Talented, but there's a mismatch between what he wants to achieve and what I can achieve on his behalf using the technology. Mm -hmm. Another thing uh, that would be in finding the solutions, as much as we want to be included in the mainstream, we also need uh, a, an incubating space for artists uh, who are able to differently. Uh, whereby, before we can compete on the on the main platform, we are able to use the the uh, whatever experiences have been gained by the artists who have been ahead in their struggles and they have achieved, we use their knowledge and their challenges to teach the coming generation whereby they don't have to go through the same problem mm. that they have gone through. That they, I mean, that, gone that, through. That they have gone through and eventually have something uh, that, that looks like a talent uh, academy or an incubation space. Uh -huh. You get whereby we have this music, we have this uh, this uh, producer who is on a who is on a wheelchair. We have this DJ, all this space, and then we bring them out as as uh, as as, as uh, the American got that uh, thing. So mm. if we could be having such creative spaces that are able. Uh, to not only uh, work with existing artists, even for that person that would like to become an artist, but they have no idea where to start. Mm. And also, also just to mention that, you know, AI is such a big game changer, and I feel like there's so much, you know, that um, um, it's it's currently being used for, but I think it's also a huge opportunity uh, in terms of assistive technology for people in the creative, you know, for persons with disability in the you know, creative economy space, or in the creative space generally. To be able to have you know better access, I, I think yeah, I think AI is a big game changer. I know for me, it would I for the better part of my life as a producer, I worked with engineers in the studio. Um, Toju, who's here with me, actually, we started out as you know my sound engineer, and then obviously morphed into you know management and stuff like that. So yeah, I agree with you. You know, working spaces where people can transfer knowledge is one way we can enrich ourselves and enrich the economy. Can everybody hear me? All right. Yes. Yes. All right, so working spaces where we can, you know, transfer knowledge is a space, is, is, is an opportunity to enrich ourselves and enrich our economy. And um, that way the world doesn't get to miss out on, you know, just how much I think as creative people, persons with disability can contribute, you know, to the creative economy in general. But um, we're almost out of time. Um, I just wanted to th throw out a, a general question and just have us answer it in like um, maybe take take one one minute each or so or less and just sort of go through that um, how do you think partnerships between creative industries disability advocacy organizations and policy makers you know contribute to fostering a more inclusive and sustainable creative economy for persons with disabilities um, I, I, I want to start with you Dennis do you want me to take the question again or you're good yeah very good Sorry? Take the question again. Okay. So I'm, I'm saying, uh, how can partnerships between these sets of people, so creative industries, right? Disability advocacy groups or organizations, you know, such as, you know, Enable and the likes, and policy makers, um, such as, actually, you know what, I think we should start with Mr. Ezekiel Mutua because you're in the space of policy and le legislation. So how do you think, you know, the intersection between these groups, you know, how do you think it can help foster a more inclusive and sustainable creative economy for persons with disabilities? Uh, absolutely. Like I said, it has to be an ecosystem and we have to work together. Mm. Uh, but I think... Uh, Policy makers are very important in this one, and, uh, mm. and uh, I think it's going to be an advocacy to be towards getting 
the government and those in authority to understand that this is a responsibility that they cannot wish away. That uh, creatives require uh, intentional, structured budget support. Mm -hmm. And like Aman was saying, even incubation centers mm -hmm. and places designated for them to be able to uh, do their work easily. This, 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 this doesn't take a lot of money. Mm -hmm. This just needs to be to have an allocation in the line ministries to ensure that uh, we even have the data for uh, how many creatives do we have in this place with disabilities and how much is needed for them to be able to achieve their dreams. And all they need is to present proposals to the right ministries and organizations like MCSK and others to lobby so that those spaces are created. And it's not a lot of money. I've been in this space for quite a while and I've realized that they, where there is will, we can do a lot. We have worked with the creative economy when I was the CEO of the uh, Kenya Film Classification Board mm -hmm. and set up uh, Nairobi Cinema and with very little money. We were able to modify to create a space for artists to be able to showcase their skills. Mm -hmm. So what I think is lacking is actually an intentional uh, goodwill from the government. One, to set aside the money. There is a, like if you look at Kenya, the, uh, the, the docket is structured along the Ministry of uh, Culture, Arts and the Gender, and then there's the Creative Economy, there's Youth Affairs, and all these ministries are budgets. So they can put aside money to support the creatives to have spaces, to have the technology to be able to do their work. And I think that that, mm. that ecosystem needs to be supported by all of us. Thank you so much. Um, in addition to that, I want to say, obviously, collaborations, you know, collaboration among these. Obviously, Enable is doing an absolutely exceptional job of just bringing together different stakeholders and making sure that people collaborate to, you know, address the interests of persons with disabilities and make sure that, you know, they also... Um, you know, the, bring the much needed value that I feel like, you know, is the, the world is missing out on uh, in terms of our contribution to creative economy. Um, I was hoping we'd take questions, but um, our time is up. Next session is um, going to begin sh shortly. But I just want to leave on this note. Um, I just want to leave saying um, the world is missing out in many ways on the contributions of persons with disabilities, um, economically, you know, and otherwise. And it is as we have these conversations and as we take practical steps towards including in very pra in, in, in a practical sense, you know, the world will continue to miss out on a huge fraction of, you know, the contribution to just our economic well-being and this is a time when i think the world needs it you know more than any other time or even africa needs it because you know we are having conversations around you know inflation and you know multiple taxations and all kinds of so there's there's a lot of stress out there and i feel like it's not the time to miss out on you know people who can very meaningfully contribute towards growing our economy. So I want to say, let the conversations continue to happen. Um, let's encourage these spaces to be built. Let's encourage the work that Enable is doing. Let's encourage, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, just let's have the conversation generally. Let's continue to have these conversations and um, hopefully, you know, we will take it away from here and I'll connect with my guys and, um, you know, thank you very much, uh, Let me say Dennis. It. Thank yeah. you, uh, Mr. Ezekiel Mutsua. Thank you so much, Kamano. Thank you, Nadia. Thank you so much for your contributions. Uh, hopefully we can move this conversation along. Uh, on, and for those of you online, carry on the conversation. It's a very important one to have at this time. Thank you very much.